The scripture reading for this afternoon are from Gospel Luke, chapter 9, from verses 52 to 56. Then we read into chapter 10, from verse 1 to 37. Now let's read those verses. Chapter 9, 52. And he sent messengers ahead of him, who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparation for him. But the people did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned to rebuke them, and they went on to another village. And we turn to chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them, sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bags, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a sound of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you eat, enter, whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into a street and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bithadai. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me. The one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to, to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of enemy. And nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you are hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. 
and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, the same teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbors as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will leave. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite who came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had a compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarius and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of those three do you think proved to be neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Please pay more attention to the following verses from 38 to the, to the end. Um, the following verses will be the base for this afternoon's sermon. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. And so far with the scripture reading. After the sermon, we'll respond with seeing him, 67, stands 1, 3, uh, 1, 6, and 7. 1, 6, and 7. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almost everyone's life is busy every th single day. As a parent, you have your child with homework while making dinner, then follows bath time and bedtime routine. Parents with older children are found attending volleyball and basketball games and various other school events. Many of us may have a to-do list or a honey-do list at Central. As a student, you are busy with school and homework. You are busy with sports or band or school leadership. As an employee or employer, you are busy with work. As a church member or office bearers, you are busy with 
church, of course. You're busy with the youth group, school board meetings, various committee meetings, constituent meetings, vegan meetings, home visit, and other church business. The above mentioned are all good things for us to do to serve and glorify God. As a Christian, we have many appropriate responsibilities. Sometimes, however, good things get in the way of better things when we fail to prioritize our activities properly. When we let ourselves be distracted by the good stuff, then we easily miss out on the better things. It is well illustrated by the story of the two sisters, Martha and Mary. Let's examine this story and see what Jesus' lesson is for us through this story. And therefore, I preach to you this afternoon under this theme. Jesus calls believers to the top priority of his presence. And under this theme, there's two points we'll share together. As first point, contrasting conduct of Martha and Mary. And the last point is the voice of the Lord and our lessons. Now the first point, contrasting conduct of Martha and Mary. Our story begins with the verse 38. The text says, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Now, it raises several questions here. First, where were Jesus and his disciples going when they were on the road? Chapter 9, verse 51 tells us that he set his face to go to Jerusalem. So Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the cross, on his way to his death. It gives a turn to everything that follows. Now the second question. The second question is, where was this village that Jesus entered? Luke does not, does not say. But Gospel John tells us that the name of this village was a was Bethany. It was very close to Jerusalem. That is used in today's term about three kilometers. The third question is, who was Martha? She was a sister of Mary who anointed Jesus' feet with perfume and the sister of Lazarus who was raised from the dead by Jesus. That means Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were from one family. Most of the theologians believe that Martha was the oldest and the head of the house. According to the Gospel of John, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were friends of Jesus. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus loved all three of them. However, in the Gospel of Luke, Luke does not say whether they were really Jesus' disciple or not. Anyway, Martha welcomed Jesus to her house, showing typical hospitality. Whether they had known Jesus before or not, we do not know. But by the invitation of Martha, Jesus came to her house, and she became busy serving. We are now told what exactly she did. But according to the customs, she is no doubt that she began preparing a good meal for her guests. Brothers and sisters, it is no coincidence that our text follows the good Samaritan narrative. The lawyer was a man who refused to be hospital, hospitable even to those in need. Here we see a woman welcoming Jesus into her house. No doubt, this was a town that the disciples had already visited, for they 
had been sent by Jesus not long ago to preach the kingdom of God and to heal. The village people had received and entertained them. Jesus referred to this in Luke chapter 10, verse 8, where she commanded his disciples, saying, When you enter a town and people receive you, eat what is set before you. Hospitality then and now was an essential cultural norm in the Near East and a hallmark of the early church that followed Jesus. As such, it's essential in the biblical world in general and in Luke's gospel in particular. Therefore, welcoming Jesus and his disciples was a sign of receiving the message of the kingdom of God, which is what they proclaimed. To receive the message of Jesus is to receive the message of Jesus. So this verse tells us that Martha was a supporter of Jesus. She was doing a good thing by welcoming Jesus into her house. Here we should think about this. People of the Samaritan village recorded in chapter 9 did not welcome Jesus and his disciples. If Martha had, had done the same to them by not opening her home to Jesus, she would probably not have received her brother Lazarus, who was later raised from the dead. Did you see the rich blessing Martha received when she welcomed Jesus into her home? And think of the rich blessings we had received when we welcomed Jesus into our heart and our lives. Verse 39 says, Martha had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Notice that the spouses of Martha and Mary are never mentioned. It seemed likely that, it seems likely that they were single or widowed. Mary said at the Lord's feet. The original text word uses here is describes Mary me, means sitting next to. It encompasses the concept of closeness. So we get the picture of her sitting next to God, enjoying closeness and intimacy in his presence. Her posture is very important. Sitting at the Lord's feet is an ancient tradition where a student or a disciple would sit at the feet of someone in authority. So in Acts chapter 22, verse 3, we find that Apostle, Apostle Paul was brought up and educated at the feet of Gamaliel, the rabbi in the Jewish law. Thus, Mary's posture in, indicates that she was a student while Jesus was a teacher. She submitted to his authority. Bible says that she said and listened. She was one of those who really listened to his word. She accepted the words and pondered what they meant to her. She was a serious student. However, Mary was doing th something that women were not usually allowed to do in the first century, becoming a teacher's disciple. Thus, the women were exempt from the study of the law. Our text says that she sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. According to the Greek text, this verse means she was listening to his word or message. The tense of the verb indicate continuous, tentative listening. Notice that she was listening to his word and not to idle talks or gossip. We are not being told what he was teaching. Perhaps he is explaining the gospel to her. Possible describing his experience and sharing his meaning. 
But on the other hand, he could also be instructing her on becoming a better follower. Whatever he said to Mary, she clung to his every word and listen, listened attentively to everything he said. In other words, her attention was focused entirely on Jesus and his every word. The word of the Lord so attracted her, it was as if he had been carried into another world. The cares of this life had departed. And all she was concerned with was the word of life that came from the Savior's heart and lips. Do you feel the peace in Mary's heart? She was at peace content to listen to and be with her Lord. Her time with Jesus was more important to her than anything else. She was more concerned with being a good disciple than a good hostess. However, verse 40 of our text tells us that Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. The portrait we see here is that Martha was very busy in her serving. It's understandable since the disciples were most, most likely in her house as well. Although verse 38 reads, they were traveling. This prologue it immediately becomes singular for him. He was welcome in Martha's house. Does not mean that the 12 disciples suddenly left Jesus. The singular is used because he was naturally the leader of the group. The similar reference to the singular reference to Jesus when replying, when, Im, when implying the presence of his disciples can be seen in Luke chapter 6, verse 1. That, verses, that verse says, on a Sabbath, while he was going through the green fields, his disciples plucked and ate some heads of green, rubbing them in their hands. Therefore, she had to prepare meals for a considerable group of people, at least 16. No doubt, she was trying to keep up with the social expectance of the time as to how to treat honored guests. The word distraction means to be pulled away from something and overburdened with something. Martha was overburdened by all the work he had to do. Poor woman. We feel for her, don't we? If we use modern kitchen language to describe Martha's work, the result might somewhat, somewhat like follows. She thinks that she simply could not possibly take care of all the details of this elaborate meal by herself. Appetizer, salads, meat, vegetable, dressings, bread, dessert, arranging guests around the table, and so on and so on. Maybe had a Chinese sweet and sour. It is actually a very familiar picture of our lives in the 21st century, brothers and sisters. Every day, many different demands and concerns are whining for your attention. Each day you feel pulled in another direction. Your job needs this. Your spouse needs that. The kids need this. The house requires that. And so on. And you, we are so distracted and so frustrated that we cannot seem to get anything done. We wear so many hats every day. We probably often feel that we are too busy, don't we? Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to him. But Martha was pulled in many different directions. You know what that's like 
don't we? You've experienced the being snowed under, distracted by many jobs. You wanted to help, but did not know where to turn. We've all experienced this too. In fact, we are a lot. We are a lot like Martha. Martha was not involved in wrongdoing or bad things, nor was she engaged in sinful activities. She was serving. In fact, she was serving Jesus, our Lord. What's wrong with that? What is the sin in that? Martha's problem was that she was too seriously distracted in her serving. She missed what Jesus wanted her to do that afternoon. She missed the joy of sitting at Jesus' feet, enjoying his presence and listening to his life-giving words. Martha was so well overwhelmed by all his distractions that she became angry at being left in the kitchen alone. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, now don't, don't miss this little word, Lord. The first word that came out of Martha's mouth was a confession that Jesus was her Lord. Well done, Martha. But Martha, who had just confessed that Jesus was Lord, re rebuked him. First, he asked Jesus if she did not care that Mary had left me, left her to serve alone. Serve alone was Martha's question in a nutshell. Martha was serving Jesus alone. And whenever we do that, whenever we serve alone, whenever we serve in our own strength, we are exhausted. Each of us cannot tell how many times we have tried to serve the Lord alone without stopping to refresh ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We need to know. We need to know that recuperating in the presence of the Lord is as vital to our spiritual life as it is, it, as it is to our serving itself. Then Martha asked Jesus to command Mary, tell my lazy sister to come and help me in the kitchen. Well, there's another exact word our text says, but that is very much what Martha meant. Furthermore, Mary's gesture embarrassed Martha and humiliated the family. Imagine that. A woman sitting at the feet of Jesus like a man. For Martha, on this occasion, the woman's place was not seated with the guests, but preparing meals for her guests in the kitchen. Martha felt that she had a good reason to be annoyed. In her outburst of irritation, she found fault with Mary and Jesus for allowing Mary just to sit there idly. Martha thought that Mary and Jesus were the problems. But the problem was neither that Mary did not help Martha, nor that Jesus allowed Mary to sit at his feet. The real problem was Martha's exclusion of Jesus. Martha served alone, but it was not Mary's fault. Instead, it was Martha's fault. Martha also needed to sit at the feet of Jesus. But yet, she was so busy with things that she did not have time for Jesus. It is the same problem, brothers and sisters, we face today. As the doers, as the doers, we must be aware of this. We are sometimes so involved in doing things for Jesus, just so intent on doing things for him, that we do not spend enough time in Jesus. We do not stand, spend enough time in pure commun communing with him. We do not spend enough time listening to his word. We do not spend enough time in Bible study and in prayer. Jesus had to refuse and not grant Martha's request. 
Jesus would not refuse Mary to sit at his feet. How could he tell Mary to leave his feet? How could Jesus tell Mary to choose distracting, frustrating activities and services over the sweetness of sitting in the Savior's presence and learning from him? He could not tell Mary to leave. But he could counsel Martha and gently rebuke him, rebuke her. Now this brings us to the last point. The voice of Jesus and our lessons. In our text, verse 41, Jesus answered Martha. He, he says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is never necessary. Martha, Martha. Jesus repeats Martha's name as a gentle rebuke. It reveals marked dis disapproval to be sure but also tender affection and grave concern Martha Martha the Lord answered you are anxious and troubled about many things so the truth is Martha wasn't just upset that Mary wasn't helping actually she was full of worries and concerns we too often blame someone for small things when in reality we are just upset about many other unrelated things. Finally, we reach that saturation point and then we just unload whomever happens to be nearby. Likewise, just as Martha welcomed Jesus into her home, we are doing praiseworthy things. But the result of our busyness are often not good, along with stress, insomnia, headaches, and other physical symptoms. We become like a mother. We become so overwhelmed by our busyness that we become like her. We become self-centered, seeing only what we have to do in the whirlwind of our activities and the world. Even when we serve others, we're trying to include them in our business and make them anxious and troubled as well as Martha trying to do with Mary. So our business and anxiety are contagious. We can become people who often make demands on the Lord. We are too busy to fix our overcommitted life problems by making better choices. So we want the Lord to provide us with compensation to make things work out perfectly. Lord, please fix this problem. Lord, please fix next that problem. It is how we actually pray. We do not act to solve problems. We just want to help to maintain or even increase our ability to stay busy. Martha was anxious and troubled about many things. Jesus reached out to her in compassion. Know that when you are up to your neck, when too much is stressing you out, Jesus will have mercy on you too. And this kind of situation in this kind of situation, you need to hear these words of Jesus to Martha because they are also addressed to you. We should note what Jesus didn't say. Jesus didn't say that only one thing was right or important. Jesus did not condemn Martha for her service to, to him. What she did was neither wrong no unimportant. However, there was only one true necessary thing. Martha was so involved and distracted by many things that it neglected this true necessary thing. Only one thing, Jesus says, is really necessary. 
someone, someone have interpreted this saying to mean only one dish would have been needed. But what immediately follows certainly favors the other and widely held interpretation, namely, the one thing necessary is the portion Mary has chosen, has chosen. That is a sitting at Savior's feet and listening to his word. Can there, in fact, be anything greater in value than wholeheartedly devotion to and adoration of the Lord Jesus Christ, the revelation of a God triumph? The question is asked at times, but was not Jesus a bit unfair to Martha? After all, did she not have a case? The following must be borne in mind, brothers and sisters, except for the finishing touching touches. The meal should have been ready when Jesus and his group arrived. We have enough reason to believe that he had taken care that this hostess knew about his coming. Was he not always sending men ahead to announce his arrival? Listen to Psalm 119 from verses 57 to 64. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep, my, keep your word. I entreat your favor with my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay keeping your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to praise you. Because of your righteous rules, I am a companion of all who fears you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Martha thought she needed Mary's help. But what she needed was Jesus Christ. God does not need our service, but instead we need him. So we need to have our minds, our hearts, focused on one thing rather than being distracted by many things. When we sit at the feet of Jesus and let him guide our lives, he gathers all the pieces together just as a magnifying glass focuses the scattered rays of light into a single line. Jesus focuses all the dimensions of our lives into a cohesive Godward direction. In verse 42a, Jesus tells Martha, Mary has chosen a good portion. There are many things in life, brothers and sisters, that you can choose. Have you chosen the good portion as Mary did? With limited time and resources in life, you have to choose something. So what will you listen to? What will you read? What will you watch? What will you study? How will you spend your time? You cannot do it all, so you have to be selective. Mary decided to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. And it turned out to be the good portion she had, she had chosen. The Bible calls this a great wisdom. This will help you make all the other right choices throughout the day and strengthen you to keep going on forward. But first, you must learn from God and you must obey his word. Then you must sit beside Jesus and approach him in worship and prayer. For some theologians, this passage tries to set up a choice for the reader. Do you choose to be Mary or Martha? Do you choose to sit down or do you choose to serve? But this is a false proposition. 
Here it is not saying that Martha's choice was wrong, but Mary's choice was right. But that Jesus is with them here and now, and all we need is attention to him and a focus on him. This means that we do not have to choose between activism and contemplation. We need to choose a balance that makes us whole, free of distractions and worries. We need to focus on what is important in faith. Both are important. But you must allow your service to grow out of the way you sit. When you sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him, you will not serve Jesus less, but serve him better. There is a time to serve and a time to sit quietly. And Jesus says, sit down first. In today's society, busyness is a means of avoiding facing the complexity of the world. By staying busy, we never ask ourselves difficult questions. We keep ourselves busy so we don't need to set priorities. As a Christian, we need to slow down to practice the art of vigilance, wait, rest, and be ready to act when required. If we are too busy and constantly running around, we may miss the most important opportunities. It is too busy for the church to become bloated with so many projects that we forget the most crucial purpose. The wisest thing the church can do is know that it is time to stop some projects or activities. If the purpose of everyone serving Christ has been lost, that is the time to have fellowship with God, study and listening to His Word in all your business. Don't forget that only one thing is truly necessary. It's not the next task on your do list. It's not to serve others, but to enjoy the Lord Himself. Jesus tells Martha in verses 42b, the good portion that Mary chooses will not be taken away from her. Mary's time spent at the feet of Jesus will not be in vain. That and not something else. This and that dish of, and dish of food, for example, is a portion that will never be removed from Mary. And for that matter, for everyone who copies her example. But Jesus implying that Martha's extremely zealous actions were being wasted. Therefore, her service would also be taken away, for her actions were of no lasting value. Why not? Because they did not derive from the center, from Jesus' strength and presence and guidance. When serving for Christ, becoming a substitute for a relationship with Christ, it loses its eternal value. Jesus said only one thing was truly necessary. Mary chose the good part, and that will not be taken away from her. We should all ask ourselves, how often in your busy life have you actually sat at the feet of Jesus and listen to his teaching? How often do you really come to the Lord and learn his ways? Do you have time in your busy schedule? When there is only little time, are you really studying and listening to his word? Or are you still busy thinking about other things? It's a matter of priority. Brothers and sisters, while everything you do may be good, 
beneficial and even relatable. But you got to know that there is nothing more important than being with the Lord and learning from Him. You know, if you are so busy that you don't have time to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen and learn from His Word, then you really need to reevaluate your life correctly because your priorities have been misplaced. Simply put, if all you know is too busy for Jesus, or even too busy, then you are really too busy. I heard this phrase recently, and it's true. Ran true in my heart as I heard it. It says, if the devil cannot make you bad, he will certainly make you busy. May we all learn something valuable from Mary's example and Jesus' teaching and make, take action to make things right. In this way, we can make the right choices and we need to spend time with Jesus. Many of our business and distractions do stem from the noblest intentions. We would like to be good parents and we want to provide our children with opportunities to enrich their lives. We want to be a successful and caring employer or a good, responsible, and productive employee. We would like to serve our neighbors. And yes, we want to serve our church, our Reformed community. We want to serve God. In fact, what would the church be without the Mathas, the faithful who work in the hospitality and services to make the church a welcoming and well-functioning community? However, however, if all our activities leave us with no time to be still in the presence of the Lord and listen to the word of God, we are likely to end up feeling anxious, and troubled. We are most likely to end up with a service that lacks, of, lacks love, joy, and resentment towards others. Listening and doing, both receiving God's word and serving others, are vital to the Christian life as the breathing in and breathing out is to breathing. Yet, we often forget to take deep breath in. We're usually trying to serve without being nourished by the Word of God, like expect, expecting good fruit from a grow, to grow from an uprooted tree. This is an exciting lesson about prior prioritization. Of course, God does not want us to let our families go hanger, hungry while we give up our jobs and read the Bible all day long. We need to take care of those things that are important. However, God wants us to get go, let go of those things that are not important and focus on those things that are. It is this divine line that can sometimes cause us distress. In this case, Martha felt obligated to be the hostess and serve everyone. Mary, uh, maybe there's another way, or perhaps it can be put off a little later. We are all careful about many things, but still bothered by them. But few things are actually worth the amount of time we spend worrying about. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, for example, if we as a society spend much time thinking about the gospel as we do losing weight? If we spend a lot of time talking about Christ as we do talking about other people? What if we worried 
as much about the preparation of our spiritual lives as we do about our money. God should always be our priority and is the most important of all things. But too often, all thoughts and actions are focused on the things that are really do not matter. Today, let's start to make some better choices about the things we spend our time doing and worrying about. Sure, we need to take care of ourselves and our lives. But like Mary, let's choose to stop worrying and sit back and listen to Christ as much as we can. Amen.